I'm going to reveal to you what most e-commerce gurus don't want you to know. Did you know that Shopify currently has over 1.3 million stores live? And did you know out of those 1.3 million, 1 million are from the USA alone? Now, let's compare that with Wix that has 949,000 websites, or BigCommerce that has 48,000 websites, or ClickFunnels that has 130,000 live websites up, or WordPress, which has 27 million websites live. Now, what this means is that no matter a recession, global pandemic, there is still money to be made out there. As one of the people I look up to, his name is Grant Cardone, he would say that the world has an ocean of money available. Now, according to Statista, e-commerce used to be around 4% of the total market share in 2010, compared to 11% back in 2019. Now imagine that, for every $9 made in retail stores, such as people going to malls, headed to Target to pick up their needs, one dollar of that is made online. Now, what that means is that e-commerce is about ready to explode into numbers that we've never imagined could be possible in the next five or even 10 years. Imagine flipping that all around and saying that for every one dollar made in traditional retail stores, nine dollars is made online. Or even five dollars made in retail stores, five dollars is made online. That's crazy. That's just really crazy to think about. Now, that's where our society is headed from what we're seeing. More and more people are gaining access to the internet and starting to trust the process of buying online more often. Now, take a look back in the 1970s where we see how many people were actually using credit cards back then compared to cash. Not a lot, right? Credit cards back then were not as trusted as cash back in the days. Now. 30 days, 30 years to 50 years later, um, we're all using credit cards. This is the same shift that's going to happen in the near future where more and more people are going to start turning to their mobile devices or computers to make purchases. Now, this is where I transition into the next part of my video, which is why I'm going to reveal to you what most e-commerce gurus don't want you to know. All right, so we're on my computer now, and you can see we're literally working at home. Uh, we're not in our normal office, and, and um, right behind me is my cousin Jeff, and also he's our COO, um, Chief of Op Operations in our companies that we, we run. Now, I'm gonna talk to you about um, e-commerce, okay? And this is stuff that the gurus don't want you to know. Um, the reason is because the gurus will show you that, hey, here's a huge screenshot of how we did, you know, hundred thousand dollars in ninety days, but they don't show you the behind the scenes. I'm going to show you the behind the scenes. I'm going to show you one of my stores and our profit and loss statement for that store for a whole year. So March is actually um, our entire one year anniversary. So I'm going to show you that right now and what we were able to do in a year and the profits as well, not just revenues but also profits um, as well, because um, revenue and profit. Um, is completely different. You can have a hundred million dollar revenue, but only take away in profit ten thousand dollars. Okay, so it's it's completely different. Um, so you want to make sure that you understand profit and revenue. So if you're making a hundred thousand dollars revenue in e-commerce, typically you're aiming for about a ten to twenty percent um, uh, profit margin. Okay, so if you're making $100,000 in e-commerce, you want to make 10 to $20,000 in net profits. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, basically what I've seen a lot of students do, and I was I'm able to help coach thousands of students, literally thousands of students, um, through our program, and I want to show you how I've seen students go from six figures, my personal students go to six figures, and even go to seven figures in sales utilizing what I'm going to show you right now. Now, when you're first starting out, you know, some of the myths that people are, are you're going to say is, hey, I see this guy, he spent $100,000 in ads. I don't have $100,000 to spend on advertising. That's actually um, 
perfectly okay, that's fine. Don't think about it that way as the $100,000 being spent on advertising. Instead, think about where they first started and, and how they got to that $100,000 spend to making, let's say, $200,000, $300,000. I'm gonna show you exactly that. I even have like my PNLs pulled up right here, which I'm gonna go over with you guys later. Um, I'm gonna show you exactly what happened to that one store, so stick around. Now, I wanna, I wanna explain what the gurus don't tell you, okay? Now, in e-commerce, you're gonna have your ups and downs, and I'm gonna show you the ups and downs in our PNLs here as well, but you're going to have your ups and downs. When you're first starting, if you don't know anything and you're just beginning, it's going to be very difficult to understand how to avoid those downs or how to mitigate those ups and uh, those downs so that you can have more ups in your business, okay? so. Let's just say you're starting out, okay? And typically, let's say you, you put a budget, all right? And your budget here is $30 a day, okay? So you spend about $900. So I have a technique um, in my formula inside of, of my e-commerce trainings that you would spend only about $30. So let's say you start off spending $30 per day in testing products, in finding new products, in in validating if the product works and if it's going to sell with your market. But let's just start with that. So let's say your marketing spend for the first month is about $900, okay? Now, your cost of goods is typically going to be um, 20 to 30% of your actual, um, of your actual uh, profits made. Okay, actually, instead of ad spend, um, let's just remove that. It's, our, it's already right here. So let's remove that. So you spend a total of $900 in marketing, okay? You're, let's, let's do the, the cost of goods later. Let's say your employee cost is zero because you're working on it yourself. Your office cost, when you're working as a, as an entrepreneur and you're working from your home, you can actually deduct that office cost with the IRS. Um, you can deduct a portion of your home, like let's say your office or wherever you're working at, you work in the kitchen as well sometimes. You work in the bedroom sometimes. You work, but you know, most most of the time you have to be reasonable. It's it's most likely in the office. So you deduct what your what your the 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 space of your office is and how much you pay in rent or mortgage cost, and then you can deduct that as well. So let's say your office cost for the month is a hundred bucks. Okay, your Shopify costs, um, and this this hundred dollars is based on your mortgage and based on deduct deductions, whatever it is, that's that area that you work in, that's your office cost right here. Now, your Shopify costs, um, let's say you have uh, apps and you have the $29 a month Shopify subscription, this will probably cost you anywhere between like 50 to 100 bucks, okay? So let's say on the very low side, let's do $50. Now your merchant fee, this is about anywhere between 3% to 4%, okay? so. Three to four percent, all right. And your cost of goods typically you want to be roughly around the range of about 20, 20 to thirty percent cost of goods. Okay. Now let's say out of the nine hundred dollars that you spent your first month, you you did really well. Okay. You found a really hot product, and you averaged out the entire month at let's say a two point two point two multiplier, which means that for every dollar that you spend on your advertising, you made two dollars and twenty cents back. Okay, so your total sales is equal to how much you spent in advertising. Multiply that by two point two. Okay, so that's how much you made in sales: one thousand nine hundred eighty dollars in sales. Now your cost of goods is typically going to be around twenty to thirty percent of your total sales. Okay, so your cost of goods is equal to however much you made for the month, multiplied by let's say let's say 32%, okay, 30, let's say 30%, make it even. So 30% of your um, sales, uh, total sales is your cost of goods. Oh wait, sorry, times 0.30, okay. So $594 was how much your product cost. So you sold, let's say 19, well, $1,900 in t-shirts and it cost you roughly about 600 bucks to ship those t-shirts out to your customer. So that's your cost of goods, okay? Now your merchant fees is equivalent to about, let's say let's say at the maximum like 4%. 4%, so $79, okay? So now your total profits is equal to 
this minus the total, the sum of all your expenses. Okay, so your total profit for the month you made twenty uh, two hundred fifty six dollars. Now. You're, you're thinking, you're like, oh, awesome, this is great. Like, I finally made some money here. I made $256 my first month. Um, I spent a total of about $900 in advertising because if you're using my formulas, you're gonna spend about $30 a day um, and you're just testing out, you're just beginning, you're just getting started, okay? So you spent about $900 for the month total, let's say 30 days, and you made um, $2,000 and in sales and you profited 256 Okay. Now let's say month two happens and this is a bad month. Like you, you're, you're trying everything. You're testing and you're trying to optimize. You're trying to get more sales. Okay. That's all you're trying to do. You're trying to get more sales. Now in month two, it, you try to scale up your ads. So you, instead of $1,900, let's say you spent a total of $2,000. But as you were scaling, you were seeing a decrease in um, your ROAS, return on ad spend, um, which is what we call it. So you you find you see a decrease, and instead of a 2.2, you made a 1. Point, let's say 1.4x. Okay, not as much as you would like. You made a 1.4x that month. So this is equal. So this is the same math right here. So let's just put that here. So you spent 2,000. You made 4,000 dollars. Okay, still not bad. Still okay. But with your cost of goods and everything, okay, your cost of goods let's say is 30 percent, cost you 1,300 dollars. Your office cost stays the same, okay? Your Shopify cost stays stays the same. Um, we're not also including here Shopify, so let's add on here Shopify's 2% that they take. Let's say you end up paying for that, right? Shopify 2%. So this is this also means equals total, total this times 0 0.02, okay? So that changed it up a little bit there. Um, let's say the 2% applies here and the 3% applies there. These are your fees for making this much, okay? So now your total profit is, let's see what that looks like, is um, actually, let's, let's, I don't think this is right, equals sum equals, whoops, hold on, sorry guys. Total profit equals this minus the sum of all of this, okay? Actually, it's still it's still okay, even at a 1.4x, um, because you're still at, like you still made you still made more money, um, because you're still at this uh, this multiplier. But let's say the next month you have a really really bad month. So instead of a 1.4, you did, let's say, um, point uh, so eight point eight x multiplier. Okay. So doing the same math for this one right here. Oh, sorry, this is actually at a 1.2. 2.2 so let's actually change that here to 1.4 that's the reason why so now you actually lost money here okay so let's take a look at this example that's what I was looking for I was like wait a minute this math is not right okay so now this is the correct um, multiplier instead of 2.2 it's 1.4 okay so now the next month you spent $2,000 uh, but you made a total sales of $2,800 and your cost of goods 840 you know office costs Shopify costs Shopify 2% merchant fees etc and you ended up at a loss for that month, okay? It's okay, because this happens to everybody. Happens to me a lot, happens to all the other e-com people that are teaching e-com, it happens to them all the time. But it's what you do at this point that determines whether you can scale or not, right? So in this case here, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, whenever I scale this product, I add more money into it, I start losing money. And this happens to a lot of people, believe it or not. So you want to try to avoid losing money, okay? So how do you do that is you optimize. So you, you and I teach a lot of this inside of my training as well. You basically optimize by changing your product. You find a better ad copy. You find a better message in your, in your ads. You find a better targeting. You start using, um, utilizing um, lookalikes after you have enough data in there. You start utilizing all these different things so that you can get better traffic and, and improve that. Let's say you did all of those things, okay? And the next month is also optimizing. So let's, let's actually move this here. Okay, and the next month you optimized. And from here, you basically improved it. So you went from a 1.4x multiplier and then um, you went back to like, let's say a 2.3x, okay? So you did really, really great. 
Um, you did really amazing. You found something that, that was working and then you're like, shoot, this is working really great. And then the next month, let's say you end up spending a little bit more, so $2,500, okay? So equals this multiplied by um, 2.3. So you made, you spent 2,500, you made $5,000, okay? Now let's plug in all these numbers here, pretty much all the same. Let's just do this for all of them right here. And then this one is pretty much the same, pretty much the same here, okay? So after plugging in all these numbers here, we we find out that um, we find out that you know uh, let's see what our let's see what our net profit is equals this one we can actually do like this so our net profit here was a thousand dollars so now you're you're thinking to yourself you're like oh well that's great I just made a thousand bucks this month right that's awesome now it's time to scale. So in this stage right here, this is when you start implementing a lot of the strategies and things like that. But what if what if this month right here, let's say we have two theoretical months, right? Um, let's say we had a bad month and then month four. Let's say you end up scaling and you spent 5,000, right? You spent 5,000, but you only received a 1.5x multiplier. So what this looks like is equals to this times 1.5. So you made $7,500, okay? And based on the math here, cost of goods, office cost, Shopify cost, 2% um, cost, merchant fees, you actually lost money because you had a bad month, right? So this can happen, this happens all the time. Now it's what you do in this month to turn it around to bring it back up the next month. But let's theoretically say you had a really great month this month, right? So let's say you spent $5,000, you had a great month and you, you kept going. You went from a 2.3 to a 2.2. And these are pretty normal numbers here, guys, okay? They're pretty normal. It's not like, you know, pie in the sky. I mean, it's not typical. This is this can only work if you have found the right product. But let's say you're scaling. It's, it's normal to see like a 2 to 3x. It's abnormal to see like a 5 to 10x. If you're getting a 5 to 10x multiplier, you're doing something amazing and then just keep it up, right? But if you're, if you're seeing like a 2 to 3x, that's really what a lot of people are seeing when they find the right products and when, they're, when they've hit and they're now scaling, okay? So let's say it's 2.2. So equals this multiplied by 2.2. Now the numbers all work out to where the next month you make $1,900. Great, awesome. Now. In this stage right here, you want to start. You want to start looking at building your brand. Okay, you want to start thinking about how can I get my packaging better? How can I get my shipping better? How can I get um, my customers happier and engaging with my brand over and over and over again? I want to show you this one. This one store where customers are constantly buying more and more products because we're constantly engaging with them. Um, now, let's say something happens here, and you know, coronavirus right here and shipments end. Now you're thinking about how can I get USA suppliers? How can I get um, better shipments? How can I get products from different sources? Okay, you're thinking about all these different things within, the, within this month if something happens like coronavirus or uh, a competitor comes in and swipes your entire store and, and you can't drop ship the same product. What, what happens then? Okay, there's a lot of these ups and downs. Now these are what a lot of these e-commerce gurus are not telling you is that there's going to be a lot of these ups and downs, okay? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at one of my stores. I wanna show you the P&Ls of one of my stores here. Um, the reason why I wanna show you this store is because it's gotten a full year, this, like, this month it is going to be its full year of operation. And of course, we have its ups and downs. So this is the total um, number for this store, the total number of sales. So it's got its ups, it went kind of plateaued a little bit, and then it went down um, the reason why it went down was because we had a lot of product issues, okay? So now we've fixed those product issues and now we're trying to scale it back up again, which it looks like from what I'm seeing, it looks like a steady scale. Um, so we had some issues here and then now we're, we're improving it again, okay? So I'll show you the numbers here, okay? So the first month, um, as you can see in terms of sales, started on the 8th and you can see you know, it was doing pretty healthy number of sales, like $200 a day, $100, $300, $300, um, and the profits right here as well. So initially, 
when you're first starting out a store, the profits are not going to be really, really good. It's until you start building that relationship with your customers, with your email list, starting to get to see what people are buying, starting to get to see what type of age ranges are buying, like let's say 25 to 65 year old males or females. You're, you wanna find out the, all of those things. And then of course the margins here, okay? So at the end of the month, um, I ended up with a total of about 10% margin. So the store made about $8,000, okay, in the first month, and it netted 700 bucks. Okay, it's, it's, I mean, 700 bucks for, I mean, for some people, it's, it's a lot of money, right? It's, it's good money. So um, netted about 10% of the store revenues, right? Now, in this stage right here, I'm constantly looking at ways to optimize this. How can we get this to, and we had a $1,000 day here as well. How can we get this to more $1,000 days and how can we optimize it here? So you're constantly optimizing your store over time when you're when you're building this out. Okay. Now let's go on to the next month. The next month here, um, it did fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So from eight thousand um, dollars, we had scaled it up to fifty thousand dollars. So we had a taste of the thousand dollar days, and then we were like, okay, let's do more of those thousand dollar days. And then boom, here was the numbers here: thousand dollar days, two thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. And we can see that the margins here. We're anywhere between 15, 20, 40%, even 50% margins. Now this all depends on a number of things. Your cost of goods, the type of products you're selling. If the, if the products you're selling are um, higher priced and your supplier is charging you a higher price, then of course you're gonna have less margins to play with and you can't scale as fast as you'd like it to. So at the end of the day, um, about $50,000 was made and about thirteen thousand um, dollars was actually net profit about fourteen thousand net profit so the margin there was about so let me see here divided by about thirteen thousand actually see the way around so the margins here were about twenty six percent so the first month the margin was ten percent the next month it was twenty six percent way better right way better margins now it doesn't it, like there were times where I had to actually scale back, scale back the sales because the more sales we made, the less margins we made. And we had to figure out why. So when, when you scale back and you're scaling back those margins, you're like, okay, figuring things out. It's sometimes better to make $3,000 a day than it is to make $10,000 a day. Because let's say we make $3,000 a day, but we net $1,500. But if we make $10,000 a day, we net 800 bucks, right? So we have to figure out why that was happening. So sometimes it is good to scale back. So this is some of the, another thing that some of the e-com gurus are not telling you is that you don't always have to be on massive, massive scales and do $50,000 days. And your profit margin is like e -e 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 little, little bitty, tiny, tiny little mark profit margins. When you're, when you're going to sell the store, investors look at profits versus you know, revenues. You can have million dollar revenues, but make $1, okay? They look at profits. That's why if you ever go and see people go on Shark Tank and they're like, you know, all the sharks are asking them, how much profit did you make? And then they're like, oh, we made 500 bucks like in the past year. Like, nope, I'm out, okay? Like all the sharks are out. But you see a, a little company that comes in and they're like, how much profit did you make? We made $20,000 profit each month for the last three years. They're like, oh my gosh, that's a business I wanna get into, okay? So they're looking at something like that. They're, they're not, you want to have more profit than you do um, revenue. That's always my, my case. More profit than revenue, okay? Um, well, obviously, more profit than looking at the revenues. Okay, so that's always what I'm looking at. Okay, so now the next month, all right. The next month, tried testing some new things. And then the next month, it went from uh, $58,000. So initially, $50,000 the, the second month. The third month, it did $58,000. And then $12,000 of that was actual profits, okay? So margins there are about 20%. Now, let's see what happens. Of course, after testing, it was like, okay, this testing didn't prove to do really well. Let's see the next month. The next month, it did $96,000 and $28,000 profit margin um, with a 27% profit margin right here. So $96,000 was made, $28,000 was profit way better than 20%. I'd rather do 27% profit margin than 20%. But then again, you also have this push and pull as well because the more the more revenues you make, you also make the more profits. In this case, two times the revenue 
but only about um, yeah, and two times the two times the profit here as well. So this in this case, I I was able to keep the profit margins at scale. Okay, now let's keep going. You're gonna have down months. We went from ninety six thousand to the next month fifty one thousand, making ten thousand dollar net. The next month from forty three thousand made nine thousand. Now last month sixteen percent margins versus the next month seventeen percent, improving in margins right here. The next month was forty two thousand. 27% margins, way better returns here. Now, look at look at this one, 43,000 to make 9,000 or 42,000 to make 12,000. I'd rather do 42 to make 12,000 all day long with a higher profit margin. So like I said, it's all about profit margin. And then of course we did a lot of testing right here. So I had done a lot of testing and the profit margins suck right here. So you're going to have your bad months as well, right? You're gonna have your ups, you're gonna have your downs. This is what a lot of e-commerce gurus don't tell you. And here's here's another one right here. Made thirty thousand, made um, three thousand. So so about ten percent. And then you're gonna have months where you go down. So in this case, went really really well. Kind of plateaued at about forty k, thirty k a month, and then boom down to like eight thousand because we were having a lot of issues. And you can see right here, this is where we started getting a lot of negatives. Right, we are we are starting to get more negatives here. And then of course more negatives as well, more negatives. And then we, we're now picking up picking it back up again. So you do have your ups and downs. This month right here, no, is all profits. Every single day, all profits. Actually, sorry, not every single day. Um, but you can see like there were days where you have profits and days that you don't profit at all. In this month right here, this was all profit right here. Okay, the next month we had a lot of negatives as well. Um, now you're going to have those ups and downs. It's what you do within those ups and downs that can determine how well you do. So in this case here, look at this. This one is actually negative, right? This should have been red. So this was a negative month where um, on January, it did negative $3,500. And then we were figuring things out. And then we we're like, okay, let's shut it down for a little bit. Let's find out if we can get a better supplier, negative $900. And then now we're starting to pick things back up again. So now this month, uh, we're at $2,000. So there's going to be ups and downs, okay? It's not, it's inevitable. It's going to be ups and downs. It's what you do during those ups and downs. And if you keep continuing with your business and if you keep, keep, keep continuing with your, with progressing and optimizing your store, it can get to the, to the, where you want it to be. You're going to have problems such as merchant accounts shutting you down. You're going to have problems such as, um, payment processors going out on you. You can have problems such as, um, you know, products that, you can't source because of coronavirus or something like that. You can have problems such as, um, you know, someone sabotages your business, whatever it may be, you're gonna have those problems. It's inevitable, but it's what you do during those times and how you handle those, those situations that can get you to success. So, like I said, I'm just showing you one of my stores. Okay, this is just one of my stores and we have multiple stores. This is just one of them. Now, if you take a look at this example right here, and you take a look at you know some of the problems that can come up with e-commerce, these are some of the things that you want to be aware of um, as you're getting into this. Okay, you don't want to be sold a pipe dream and just be sold a pipe dream. You want to you want to be you want to understand what you're getting into when you're getting into e-commerce. You you want to understand that there's going to be profits made to be made. Okay, it's the more knowledge that you get. The more understanding of, of the systems and the business that you're in, the better you are in improving your net profits each and every single month. All right. So once again, I, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you can subscribe to my channel so that you can see and watch more videos just like this. If you enjoy this, head over to teovanyo.com and see more content that I, that I put out there for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys have a great day and comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are about this video. Thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next video.